what up welcome back to the channel i'm Odai J and we are locked in this is the recap for house of the dragon season two episode five i apologize for being a day late and a dollar short with this recap i got extremely busy on monday and didn't get to watch the whole episode just the first 20 minutes but now we're here and we get to talk about Aegon and how he got torched up and the queen that never was well just like her name said she's never going to be the queen r.i.p and Aegon and Aemon well, we got us a new king in town. But before we jump into this and get a recap, if you like House of the Dragon, if you like these breakdowns and recaps, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers, so we're gonna try to get that before the beginning of August. We need about 700. So, this is the recap of House of the Dragon, episode five. In Driftmark, we see Corley's He's sitting here mourning the death of his wife. Now she went out the way that she was supposed to. How a Targaryen is supposed to go out by the dragon, live by the dragon, die by the dragon. Now remember, she went out there to prove a point that she was supposed to be queen at some point. They skipped over her, but she was proving herself. And also this had to happen because regardless of how she felt about Viserys becoming king, she still knew that she had to serve the crown. And now Corlys, he's going through it because he's all alone. His daughter's gone. His wife is gone. King's Landing is down right now. Everyone's looking sad. Everyone's starving. They need food. They need money. But right now, they're in a time of war. Sir Christian Cole and his whole coalition, they come through. But they're very disrespectful. They have a head of a dragon, Maylis, and they're bringing it through the town and letting everyone look now all of the people in the crowd they're like this is a bad omen meaning the dragons they're sacred yeah you'll fight them but you got to respect them a little more than that and they're all screaming out your lord king Aegon took out this dragon now everyone's looking around for where Aegon is but he's actually being brought here in a carriage that's covered up because remember he got burnt up pretty bad Allison goes to see her son after she talked to Amon about what happened. Now, when she goes in here, the maesters, they're looking at him and they're very, very careful because his armor has been melted onto his body, broken bones everywhere. Now, Allison, she's wondering, is King Aegon gonna survive? And they're like, we can't tell at this moment. But what she does start to realize is at this point, someone's gonna have to step up and take over for the king while he's down and out. Because if no one is in charge, no one is the king of the kingdom or the queen, then they're gonna look very weak. And all of the townspeople, they're gonna start to look and feel a little type of way about what's going on with royalty. Allison and Christian Cole, they haven't been messing around since everything went down with the kid being unalive. Now she goes to his room and she's asking him, what the hell happened to her son Aegon the king? And he's saying, I can't tell what happened. I don't know what Amon did. All I know is the king went out there. He tried to hold it down. And I went over there and that's where we discovered him. Now, remember, he's the one that's been putting all this in play. He's also been promoted to the hand, meaning he's the speaker for the king. So with Aegon like this, he feels bad because he should have told him to fall back and actually gave him some valuable information. But this is what Otto Hightower was saying. These guys don't have enough experience to be out here trying to run things. Rhaenyra is having her own issues at her small council, especially since Rhaenys is gone. Sir Alfred, he's looking at her and he's thinking, uh, we don't look that strong with a queen. We might need to get a king up in here. Now, she's definitely not going with that. She already knows what it takes to be a leader, but you know how it is back then. But then we see her son, Jace. He's going to talk to Bela. And he's like, listen, I'm going to go talk to Damon. I'm going to her and all, try to get him to get over here, serve our queen, and let's get this thing, the ball rolling. But right now, she's saying, if your own mother couldn't tame Damon, do you think you can? And Jace is saying, I have to, because I have to prove my loyalty and my Damon is still trying to gather up an army and an allegiance and loyalty from everyone around the land. Now he goes to talk to the Brackens and he's telling them, listen, come and get down with us. If not, 
then we'll burn down everything you had. Now, Amos, he's part of the Brackens. He's looking at him. He's thinking, huh, it is what it is. But we're not going to go serve you guys. We're loyal to the other side. And we'd rather burn than come over here and bend the knee to you all. Now, Damon is hearing this, and he's surprised that this is actually the route that they want to take. But you have to remember, in these times, your balls and your word are the only thing you have. So Damon, he's kind of shocked, thinking, dang, I thought having our dragon over here would actually make a difference. Renera goes to talk to Masseria, and she has connections all around King's Landing. And she's saying Sir Kristen was parading the dragon head around the town. But she also points out that her dad, Viserys, actually made Rhaenyra the heir to the throne. It's just everything got thrown off with Otto Hightower inserting his daughter, Alicent, to have the babies, Aegon and Aemon. So now this is giving Rhaenyra uh, a refound energy that maybe you're right. I do need to step it up. Now also remember, Missera, she was good with Damon. Damon spared her because she was a stowaway. But after she gave up that information to Renera, she has been put into a higher position and is a little more respected. So that's why you see Renera going to her because she has information and connections. She was the one to tell her how to get into King's Landing to talk to Allison. Renera is doing everything she can possible to help her fight this war. So she goes to talk to Bela. And what she's talking to Bela about is remembering her grandmother, the queen that never was. So at this point, she needs someone on her side. So what she's telling Bela is, listen, your grandmother, she didn't really like me that much, but when she went out there and she died on that dragon, she did that because she respects the throne. Your grandmother was strong and you're strong also. So what she does is she's trying to convince Bela to go to her grandfather Corley's and give him the hand to come and help her out. So she can have someone established, someone that's well respected. So Bela is hearing this and she's also reminding Bela, hey, don't forget, you have Targaryen blood in you. Damon is having weird dreams. And when I mean weird, he's in here doing the adult thing with his late mother, Alyssa. He don't know what he's doing, but she's saying that he was the favorite son. He's wilding out. But then you hear Sir Strong, hey, your grace, are you sure? Are you good? And he snaps up out of it. Now, remember, he has taken this weird serum that the lady had provided for him. So right now he's just losing it. It was supposed to be to help him sleep, but it doesn't look like it's helping him sleep. It's actually keeping him into some weird psychedelic state. King's Landing, the small council is in order. Well, they're trying to figure out who is going to step up from Aegon? We don't know if he's going to recover from it. And Allison is saying that she served as queen. It would probably be in the best interest for her to get back on the throne. Now, everyone's looking around and they're saying, nah, we don't know about that. At this moment, we need to look a little bit stronger than having a woman as queen. Now, we know that Aegon, he might not make it out of this. And Amon, we aren't sure if he did this intentionally. But he's just sitting there. And now the hand, Sir Christian, who has been promoted to the hand, it's up to him to make the decision. And he passes over Alicent and he makes Amon the king. So now it's about to be war. Jace is taken off to go talk to the House of Frey. Now the twins, they're sitting here and they have the passage that they're trying to get the army through. So Jace is saying, listen. You guys come over here, you bend the knee to us, you acknowledge that Renera is the real queen, and we're good. Now the twins, they're saying, why would we do this? And if we did this, we need two things. We need you guys to protect us from um, the other Targaryens, yeah, the other side, the greens, from their dragons. And also, we want the castle, Harnoff, Basically, they want where Damon is at. And Jace is saying, okay, we'll do that. But they're saying, are you sure Damon is going to give up the castle? He says, Damon still does whatever the queen wants. So no one's really on the same page. Everyone's just trying to figure out how to make this puzzle connect. 
Bela goes to talk to her grandfather, Corlys, who is still grieving over his wife's passing. And she shows up and says, Queen Rhaenyra wants to give you the hand. Now, Corlys, he doesn't want to do this. He wants to step away from what the Targaryens have going on, not knowing that Rhaenys went out there on her own to protect the queen. Now, he hears about being the hand, and he's like, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to let you be the heir to everything we have in Driftmark. Now, Bela, she says, listen, the heir to Driftmark, that's for salt and sea. I'm blood and fire, basically saying I'm Targaryen first, more importantly. Now, she loves her grandfather, but she's going over here to help the Targaryens because that's what her mother did. And her mother and grandmother both died by a dragon, and she said that's how she wants to go out. Everyone is gathering up whatever resources they can, talking to whoever they can, and making something happen because this war is about to take effect and you're going to need someone on your side. We see Amon sitting in front of the, the throne. And while he's sitting there, Helena shows up and she asks him, was it worth the price? Was it worth it? Insinuating that he's the one that got Aegon burnt up, torched up with all these broken bones so he can move into the position of the king. Now, of course, he doesn't say much. He just looks at her and you can basically say that, yes, indeed it was worth it. But with no words, he just looks at her with that one eye and then looks back at the throne. Jace finally gets back home and he's talking to his mother about what happened. And when he gets in there, she's telling him, listen, you did a good job. You did what you were supposed to do, but you need to fall back. You are my son. And he's saying, well, you're the queen. You shouldn't be out here doing any of this. And I have to prove that I'm in line for the throne. I have to prove that I'm capable of being next to take over all of this. Now, of course, Renera doesn't want her son involved in any of this besides going and relay messages. But he wants to step up and prove himself. And that's the same thing he was telling Bela when she was saying, are you really going to be able to get Damon and tame him? And lastly, what we hear. Jace comes up with an idea. He says, listen, we have dragons and there are a couple of wild dragons that we just need someone to go claim and tame. The only thing is there aren't any more Targaryen blood within their compound. But what he says is there has to be history. There has to be notes of families that got married off into other families that have Targaryen blood. It may not be as strong as ours, but they're still Targaryens. So they're about to go through their own little ancestry book and find any cousins of cousins or aunties or uncles that have been married off to other families so they can get them to get on dragons and help fight the Greens. All right, there you go. A recap of episode five. Let me know what you think about the Greens versus the Blacks. Who's more organized at this point? We see that the Greens, they're kind of trying to figure out, did Amon really do this? And then you look at the Blacks, they're trying to figure out, hey, is there any more Targaryens that can come help us fight this war? So everyone's all over the place. But who would you say is more organized at this point? I'm ModiJ. That's the recap of episode five. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.